Hello, welcome to my tech fan. Bemol have sent me A1 Mini to present on my channel. This is very fast best legal CD printer. Great for the beginner as it is plug and play printer with full auto calibration and it is able to print bench in only 14 minutes. The max speed is 500 mm per second and 10,000 mm per second is the max acceleration. It has a permanent price drop. I think for the printer now currently it is $249. And 399 is the combo together with the AMS light. The build volume 180 millimeters in X, Y, and Z direction, and the max nozzle temperature is 300 degrees Celsius, which is good enough for these materials which they recommend to use. Uh, but the bed temperature is 80 degrees Celsius. This is far enough even for the PETG, but not enough for the ABS or ASA. So even if you place this inside the enclosure. Properly, you are not able to print uh, these materials because they require 100-105 degrees Celsius on the bed surface. Now, my marketing contact uh, told me that uh, there are many videos with the technical analysis and they asked me just to present the printing possibilities. So this is what I will do in this video. I will just print with these materials, PLA, PTG, TPU, and also I will do some color prints and I will try to explain you to understand when I think it is worth to use this AMS color printing and when I think it is a little bit waste of the materials. I'm not talking about how to reduce the purge material, something like that, but more like how to spread the parts in X and Y direction, uh, try to print more objects at once and similar. I also got uh, this uh, kit number three. This is some kind of marble run component. And they sent me some filaments, so let's unbox and start with the printing. Uh, one more thing, smaller printers has the advantage, this size is big enough for beginner users who wants to enter into CD printing world, but having it as a second printer, uh, me personally, I always choose uh, to print something on smaller printer if possible, and actually 95% of my printings can fit on this size, because smaller bed surface requires less energy, and somehow the energy became quite a bit luxury, at least here in Europe. I'm not sure what is the situation in US. Okay, let's see what's inside. The packaging is good in this black foam, but I couldn't place it back to be the same as the original form. I'm not sure how they do it, but when I remove the printer and AMS, this black foam packaging requires more space and it cannot fit into this box anymore. So this printer must have some negative volume or something like that. But you have to keep this box in case of the return or warranty problems. This is content of the box. This is the main unit, the printer, and we have this two-sided textured PI sheet. This is the AMS and parts. This is the stand for the AMS. We have some tools and spare parts, user manual, and then we have these uh, filament swatches. These are color sample cards, and we have different types of the PLA, but also I can see some PETG ABS samples too. Nice. The only thing I don't like in this kit is this. Sample filament without spool. I mean, if this is printed for beginner user, in that case they should place this sample filament on some small spool or similar because uh, the beginner users don't really know that what kind of problems he may have with this kind of sample filaments. <laughs> this black part looks like it is part of the printer, but actually this is just a securing element. Maybe they should do it this in red color or something like that. I have to tie these three screws to lock the position of the heat bed here, but I will do this in horizontal position. I also noticed that this bed has a nice thermal insulation from the bottom, so the power consumption will be really low. The purge wiper or nozzle cleaner. The spool holder installation. And now let's prepare the AMS light. This bolt will cut the thread into this plastic. These are marked and each of them goes to its own place, green and yellow. And now connecting the Teflon tubes, we have two long, two middle and one very short. Press down inside the tube and it will lock the position. For nicer cable management. Plug in the AMS cable, mm, and there is the SD card slot, oh it's already inserted. And the hardware installation is finished, maybe I needed approximately half hours together with the recording. Now it's time to turn it on, connect to the network and then to do some calibration and start with the printing. 
and with this Wi-Fi socket I can also measure the power consumption. My wife wanted to move the printer and she grabbed the first obvious thing and that's the x-axis so I think definitely some kind of handle should be added here on the top or at least some threads and then the user can print some handle and attach to it. Or maybe even a spool holder if I don't want to use the AMS I want to have the direct path. Oh I almost forgot. Connect it to network and now I will add it to my app. Okay, success. The app reminds me that I have to remove a few things. I already did this, confirm. Now it will start with automatic calibration, which takes about 12 minutes. Noise cancellation in X direction. In Y direction. <laughs> Vibration compensation. Ready for printing. I will not open new filaments, I will use these ones and big advantage of this AMS light is that it can accept carbon spools too. AMS loaded, it's ready for printing. Cleaning the bed with isopropyl alcohol. Speedboat race bamboo lap PLA. Mm -hmm. It starts with the leveling and cleaning the nozzle. Maybe it could level only the bed on that surface where the printing will be placed. Oh, it's even recording the timeless, but I forget to remove the foil from the camera. Okay. And the last element is the chimney. Oh, it's finished. Quick check of the bed adhesion. Which I know it is great on this texture PI sheet until it's hot. The surface cooled down. But even now it sticks good. The quality is amazing from this small printer. This is really perfect benchy. Look at this overhang, first layer. Maybe this bridging is only uglier on the back side. Otherwise, <laughs> perfect benchy. One string I can see on the front. Yes, when I take a closer look actually, I can see that it is a little bit more optimized for the speed. This window on the back side should be circle. Well, for the bench it needed a 0.04 kilowatt hours, but I will do now this printing, two and a half hours, the honeycomb organizer, and this will give us more accurate measuring. Mm, this printing will be two and a half hours and it uses approximately 80% of the build surface. Not sure is it visible on camera too, but absolutely perfect for a slayer. Oh, it's speeded up now. Nice progress, the printing is at 45%. Perfect. Except the brim. Interesting, there's a three color bench, but the printing time is only half hour, so maybe that color change is by layers. Let me see. I can choose the spools now, but I'm not sure which will be where. Print. It already had the first color change. And this was the second color change. And it looks like this will be the last color change, because it doesn't use the prime tower anymore. And chimney, the last element on the benchy. This is a half hour bench, this means a good quality, because it had only two color changes. This is additional maybe two minutes. And this is the waste material, which is not much. Interesting bench and it has good quality too, but again I don't really like that back window, it should be more rounded. This is one hour printing. Let's play some basketball. Even <laughs> my daughter wanted to try. This one failed, but she will get a lot of opportunities later. Oh. For this kind of printing, you really need a bed adhesion, which you can trust to. A screw gauge, and it looks like it will be in two color. Okay, started with the white color, and this is what I wanted. So probably the numbers will be in black. Printed in 45 minutes, and this is much more readable compared to this one, which I printed earlier. And this is all the waste material it produced. So this is M5 screw and the length is 
10 millimeters. A scraper is the next one. This is a second layer, much faster than the first one. This is the view from the camera. We have the picture maybe every two seconds, so it is good for the preview, but not good enough for the YouTube video. A great example when it's printing one object at a time. It finished two objects and now printing the third one. But you have to be careful with this. One color change and no up tower. And this is the only waste material. These two color D6 dice will be my next object. After importing it to Bamboo Studio, I can change uh, the colors or the filament for some objects and with this I can get two colors. And we will analyze this uh, material usage later. This is speed up time lapse video and as you can see the tool head spends more time to a side than with the printing. For every filament change it needs uh, two minutes approximately. It's finished but let's take a closer look. The quality is great, no question about that, even the first layer, but if you compare, this is the waste material compared to the used material, but uh, let's analyze the numbers a little bit. So this is our example from the video. I have a uh, two color, one object, and uh, the weight of the object is approximately 5 grams, and the waste material is almost 18 grams. Of course, if I, it would be one color, then we don't have the waste. But if I would spread 30 pieces on the build surface, in that case, the waste material will be the same, but the weight of the object is uh, bigger. Let's check this on this graph. So if I print only one piece at a time, this is the weight of the object and this is the waste material. But if I would place a 30 pieces on the build surface, this is the weight of the objects and this is the waste of the material. And look at these times, this is the time per one piece, for one color, one piece, two colors, one piece, and two colors, 30 pieces. Time for one object. In my next example, I have this gear bearing. First, I will split it to objects, and then I will select some elements to be in a different color. And with this, we have these gears in different material. We will analyze the numbers later. This is only the first layer, and this will be overnight printing. Good morning. But this is the amount of the waste material. Again, we have the same gear bearing, and this time I'm using the fill tool, and I will color only the bottom and the top layers of the gears. And if I slice the object, you can see only first uh, few bottom and top layers are in different color. And here I measure the color changing time. This is the start, and this is the end. As you can see, approximately two minutes. It's almost finished. More or less the color effect is similar, but now let's analyze the amount of the waste material. This is the first example where those gears were completely in different color. And this is the second example where I used that fill tool and only few top and bottom layers are in different color. And big difference also in the printing time. Another example, let's say we want again that these six dice and I will use this uh, gear bearing to flash material into it. Because this is just a fidget toy and it is not important what color is it. And just to show you why we have less waste, these are purge materials from the previous printing and these are from this printing. We can see the transition of the colors on these gears. The noise from half meter distance, approximately 46 decibels. Even for the feeling, it is very quiet machine. I'm less than half meter distance from the hot end and probably you can clearly hear my voice uh, and the noise is not disturbing. It will be finished in 40 minutes. It's finished, let's check the quality. No surprise, this quality of this cube is great and uh, as you can see the colors are clean, so definitely this big object is big enough for the purge material. Waste material when I printed only this dice and the prime tower. The waste material when I printed this uh, second cube with the bearing and approximately half of the weight. Um, I thought the difference will be bigger, but even then this is good progress. This is the data from the slicer and this is the first time I experienced bigger difference between the measured values and the data from the slicer. But even then the difference in the waste material is quite obvious.
two more quick examples when I think it was worth using the EMS. These are my business cards and uh, the background is two layer thick and even the letters are two layer thick. It was printed in this position and actually this can be printed with the uh, one color printer too. I designed and printed this for my wife. She needed a holder for two cards and it was printed in this position. So this is the first layer and actually for this we really need the AMS. And now let's print something from PETG. This is a Thrustle version and I'm very curious about the bedded cajun on 80 degrees Celsius. It should be enough. Default setting is 70 degrees Celsius. So usually I raise it a little bit but I will leave it as it is now. This object is for my regular bed adhesion test, maybe you saw it in earlier videos. I will measure the pulling force in kilograms and anything between half and one kilogram is good value. Uh, I will not go above one kilogram until the bed surface is hot because I don't want to damage it. The contact surface is 20 by 10 millimeters and the height of the hole for the pulling arm is 30 millimeters. Printing is finished, I will set the bed temperature to stay on 70 degrees Celsius. Zero point eighty five. This is good, but it could be even better if I would go up to eighty degrees Celsius, which is the maximum for this bit surface. Let's try to do something similar, but with TPU filament. I never tried this bed adhesion test with the TPU filament, and for the TPU I cannot use the AMS, so I have to place it there to external spool holder. And since it is very hard to unplug this tube, so in the tool head, I will just use this teflon tube and connect it here. External spool, TPU, load. I checked the different settings and for the TPU is 30 degrees Celsius, well I change it to 35, usually I'm going up to 40. The start is good and I can even see some retraction. Okay, over one kilogram, so I will stop here. And TPU goes back to the resealable bag. Don't forget the TPU is very hygroscopic filament. And when the bed cooled down, it still sticks good, only I forget to enable the camera. But on Textool PI, we don't need more than 30 degrees Celsius. And it prints great TPU, look, absolutely no stringing in this hole. And as a conclusion for the end, I still think that this is great printer for beginner users. That's why I try to explain a little bit better when I think it is worth using the AMS. Uh, even if my family members ask me to print something for them in color, even then I will print it only if the weight of the object itself is heavier than the waste material. For me that 50-50% is somehow the limit. I hope in near future the Bamboo Lab will come out with some tool changer or IDEX printer. In that case we don't have that waste material. Ah yes, another idea for the bigger objects, uh, you can use the infill to flash the filament. Now small printers have the advantage, uh, less energy is used and also they have a smaller footprint. But here it's a little bit tricky actually because the printer itself is quite small, but don't forget we need some footprint for the AMS and we need some kind of box or something on the other side to catch the poops. I think the A1 is a little bit better from this aspect because uh, there we have a solution that uh, we can mount the AMS on the top of that printer and with that we can reduce that footprint. Actually I have A1 in the box waiting for the review and uh, I'm asking you what kind of review you would like to see there. I'm thinking to compare it with the P1P which is my number one printer for the PLA material but I'm also waiting your suggestions down in the comment section. Until that, thank you for watching and happy printing!